these words are the mystery of hearing his words. That's it. That's all there was. It never happened. Love y'all. But what we're talking about is what is already. So of course, right off the bat, we've got a bit of a problem. Because how do you talk about what is already? Saying what is already is also what is already. And that's never different. There's just simply what is already. And as there's only what is already, there's absolutely nothing that can be said about it. And now I'm going to say a whole lot about it. <laughs> so being what is already, it's not, it's not restricted. There are no confinements. There's no laws that control it. So in that way, you could say it's freedom. Unconditional freedom. So it's unconditioned. It's what is already. It's unconditioned. Conditioning comes from understanding or knowing. What is already isn't, doesn't underlie that sort of conditioning. It is already. So it's unconditional freedom. And just is what is already also points to unconditional love. It's unrestricted. It's without limits. And it's what's happening. It's what's appearing is that. So there's just simply nothing we can say about it but really nothing we can say about it because everything we say is it. So it's singular. There isn't anything but what is already as the singular appearance. Everything that's said about it is what is already appearing as something being said about it. Everything we know about it or understand about it or concepts that we share about it is what is already appearing as what we know, understand in the concepts. There's just simply never two. There is only ever what is already. There's nothing happening that's making one is already hidden. It's not happening. There's nothing that's keeping what is already from being what is already. There's nothing that needs to happen for this to become that. So that being the case, what, what are we actually talking about? And really, the, the meeting is a response to an experience that's saying or having the experience that there's something other than what is already. That's having the experience that there's me and something missing called, hopefully, what is already. There's me and the need to know. That's basically me. Me is need. So this is what all is already, and then arises a need, me. A need to know that this is what is already. Now that need to know is what is already, so nothing happened. But the experience is that something's lost. The experience is if I had the right knowing, if I had the right activity, 
if I made the right choice, I would find what seems to be missing. Now, in that dream of knowing, in that dream of separation, there can be good experiences. There can be the sense of process. There can be the sense of things getting better or of things getting worse. That all is what is already. And being all what is already, nothing happened. So no experience, no knowing, no getting better, no getting worse is any further away from what is already. Part of that knowing experience of the individual is that something needs to happen for this to be what is already. That's what is already having the experience that something needs to happen for this to be what is already. Now that knowing experience is looking for something for itself. It's looking for knowing. It's looking for security. It's looking for a situation. It's looking for endless happiness, which is silly in itself, because if there was only happiness, you wouldn't know you were happy. It only makes sense to have happiness and unhappiness, and that's not what you're looking for. But what's longed for, what's longed for is the end of looking, is the end of a need for a new or better experience. And it's literally the end of the need to know what this is. Now, the end of the need to know what this is isn't unknowing. There's no state of unknowing. The end of the need to know what this is, is just this as it is already. Nothing happened. So what we can discuss is that knowing experience, the longing it has, the ideas it has about what is already, the ideas it has about what needs to happen or how it's going to find or be a part of what it thinks is missing. What we can't do is say a thing about what is already. There's just nothing to know about it, which for the knower feels like it's then separate. It's somewhere else, but it's exactly the opposite. It is exactly that there's no separation is why this, what is already, can't be known. So that knowing experience will never be satisfied. It never gets the answers to the questions that it's looking for. It can find answers. It can find states. Hold on to them for a while, lose them, find them again but it does never find fulfillment. It never finds the end of seeking. There is no end of seeking in that sense because all there is is what is already. And what is already, when recognized, is the recognition that there was never any seeking. There was never a seeker. It was just a dream. There is no story. It's already empty. The meeting has no intention, so it's not trying to change anything, make anything happen. The meeting isn't for you. If there's an individual here that thinks they're going to get something, you'll be disappointed. It's not about you. It's actually not about anything. That's the meeting, is not about anything. The suggestion of the meeting is that what's happening, so this appearance, whatever's being thought, whatever's being felt, whatever seems to be going on, isn't really about anything. So if you follow that, that idea that this isn't about anything, what you find is that when this has no meaning or purpose, and that's the suggestion, no intention, it doesn't, it doesn't leave anything to think about or conceptualize. It doesn't mean thinking's right or wrong, but it just doesn't present anything to, to work with. And that non-presenting 
is in a sense freedom. Not in a sense of a freedom for the one that wants to work on it or the one that's looking for something. But it's a freedom of non-intention that what appears has no context as far as a need, as far as a need, as far as a journey, as far as having to become something. It's a freedom that doesn't, include, that doesn't exclude anything. It's a freedom that doesn't have anywhere to go. It's not a freedom that is to be found or is to be lost. It's a freedom that's completely impersonal. The suggestion of the meeting is that's all there is. Now a freedom that has no intention can't be found or can't be lost. That's non-conceptual or can't be thought of and can't be spoken of. You'd have to say it's a mystery. Not a mystery that needs to be solved or understood, but a mystery. And the suggestion here is everything that arises, everything that seems to be happening, is that mystery. These words are the mystery appearing as words. Whatever is being seen is the mystery appearing as sight. Whatever is being felt is the mystery appearing as feeling. In that sense, what arises is undefined, unconditioned, anarchic, wild, free, crazy, unhinged. That being the suggestion of the way things are already, what is this meeting about? The meeting is a, is a response. A response to an experience that it's not that way. A response to an experience that this isn't a mystery, that I know what's happening. I know what this is. That initial knowing when it arises, or <clears throat> now, has the sense of having something. So the individual, the experience, I am, has, has, is in the core the extension of having something. I have knowing. Knowing I am. That having has a bit of, an, of, a, of, a, of a, what do you say, um, a tail, a consequence. And that's the need to maintain that. It's the need to seek out knowing. It's the need to seek out new experience. It's the need to find a solution to the dilemma that this appearance and knowing is dissatisfying. And what's, what's become obvious to me is that the me has an exclusive experience. It is, it is everything belongs to me. Everything is happening to me. My life and me is exclusive. And therefore, I'm looking for an exclusive solution to my life. And so it has the experience that freedom or enlightenment or what it's looking for is, is particular to certain places and things. And so the message that we're talking about here has absolutely no relevance to it at all because it's not exclusive. It's the end of exclusivity. So it looks for teachers and teachings and things that reflect its need for an exclusive freedom, a freedom that's in particular places or in particular people that it can find and own for itself. And it misses the freedom, which this message is, because it's not exclusive. It has nothing to do with anyone. It is already everything. It's not ownable. No one can have it. And so for that seeking energy, it is nothing. It's nothing to the seeking energy. Missing the everything, which is nothing.
It only gets nothing from the message and misses then the everything. Because with the, the seeker, everything isn't enough because it wants something. Can't have everything, doesn't know what that is. Can't do anything with it. It's just looking for something for itself and thereby missing the unconditional freedom that is already everything. You can't do anything with it. You can't do anything with the freedom that is There is an experience that arises or seems to be happening within this appearance, which claims to know what's happening. The experience is that I am, I'm real. I was born, I have a life, and I'm going to die. And it's up to me to make my life work. It's up to me to make this appearance be as I think it should be. Now, what I think this appearance should be is actually what I think is going to make me happy. What I'm looking for is endless happiness. That's what I look for, the energy of I am. When I say I am, what I'm talking about is that experience, that I am in the body, that there's a center to the appearance. I am is that experience that I am in the body, with buttons and levers, free will and choice, meaning and purpose, to make this happening, my life, the way it should be. The reason I feel like I have this challenge or this job is because the experience is scary, dissatisfying, uncomfortable. So I am trying to overcome that experience through my free will and choice, by being a good person, basically. <clears throat> and the idea is, once I get all my ducks in a row, I'll be happy. I will fulfill my purpose. The suggestion in the meeting, but before I say that, that experience is that there's this happening, but only as a part of a bigger happening, which is my life. And the suggestion of the meeting, as I started, is there is no bigger happening in my life. There is simply this happening. And that the experience that it's incomplete or somehow dissatisfying is illusory. That it is exactly as it is, unintentionally perfect. Perfect in the sense that it has no meaning or purpose. It has no opposite, no other. It has no need to become anything other than what it is. And that isn't a need. This appearance does not need to appear this way. It's utter freedom, absolute freedom, unconditional freedom, appearing as this. Absolutely free of any intention, meaning, or purpose. So the suggestion is, Whatever arises, including the experience that this is my life, my reality, and I need to do something, is unintentionally perfect. It's neither right nor wrong. It's neither good nor bad. It doesn't need to go anywhere. And just as a little secret, it's not. It's not going anywhere. Because it's not going anywhere, and because it's already unintentionally perfect, the experience that I need to make it better will always be frustrated. It will never be fulfilled. And that seeking, that need to find fulfillment over, overlays the already unintentional perfection of the appearance as it is. Now, the appearance is not your perception. This isn't about being now. The appearance has actually no boundaries, no limits. So it is what's perceived, and it isn't what's perceived. It is what appears, and it is what doesn't appear. 
its emptiness appearing, or the absolute beingness. This happening is not knowable. Knowing is an object that arises within it. Separation is an experience that arises within it. Happening is what arises within the Absolute. The suggestion is there's no actuality to the appearance. There's no actuality to anything. There's no possibility to know what is. This meeting is not about the end of an experience, trying to change the experience that I am real, trying to find the absolute that is already everything. This meeting, or the message, or what's being suggested, has no intention to change anything at all. Because it's already obvious that what appears is already complete. So you could say this meeting is about nothing. Nothing for the individual, nothing for the brain, nothing for that experience that something needs to happen. The, the message of this, what I guess you'd call contemporary non-dualism, uncompromising non-dualism, points to this, meaning these words, this happening, this watching or hearing, these movements, as being unconditioned, unconditional, unrecognizable freedom. Now, the point of that is it's that already. This is unrecognizable freedom already. So why discuss it? Where does that impetus come from to share anything like that? Well, there's something that arises in this unrecognizable freedom that has the experience or the sense that something needs to happen. And we call, or I call that a me, an I, the knower. Knowing arises. And the knower has the experience that something needs to happen for this to be what it's looking for. Now that experience hides this as unrecognizable freedom because it's a knowing experience. And unrecognizable freedom, which is this already, can't be known. So it begins, it, go, it starts on a journey to find what it's looking for, which is a world of knowing. It actually is trying to find enough knowing to feel safe, trying to find something real that it can hold on to, to reflect the reality it experiences itself to be. And the whole experience hides what's truly longed for, which is this already. Well, I mean, I can start off with, I can just connect to what you said. Um, that you would pause it, the, the recordings, so that you wouldn't miss anything, so you wouldn't miss it, because it might be exactly there where you weren't listening. And that is exactly, that, that, is, that is the whole story of the individual. That is the whole story of separation, that there's something hidden that needs to be found, and it's up to that experience of separation to find it. The experience of separation is really just the experience I am. I know. Begins just by knowing I'm here, by knowing what this is. And the experience is that knowing is comforting. Knowing is security. Knowing is control. So the energy of the individual, the energy of seeking is to know more, to have enough experiences, to have enough knowing to make itself feel like there's enough, to make itself feel like this is complete, it's done, it's over. Knowing, however, although it gives the experience, the original initial experience of having something, knowing in the end is also the need to know. So as long as there is this solid experience of I know, there will be a need to experience, a need to know more. It never ends. There's always something else. There's always something more that needs to happen. 
That's the hopelessness of the individual experience. That need to know is an experience in the appearance, what's happening, this, being solid. So it's in relationship to me, it's happening to me, it's real, it's real and, and solid. And that experience of this separation, of this being real and solid, makes it appear as it's not. So this appearance is not real. It's not solid. There is, in essence, no real perspective. There's no real point. There could be, or you could say, that this is every perspective or any perspective. That what's happening is anything happening or everything happening. The experience of the individual is that there's something happening real to me. There's something fixed. And what's longed for is what's unfixed. What's longed for is the unconditional freedom of neither knowing nor not knowing. The unconditional freedom of this not needing to be even what it is. So the message is really a response to what you said in the beginning about not wanting to miss something. And it doesn't have any answers to that need of seeking. It doesn't actually offer anything to it. What it does is it responds to that need of something needing to happen, that need of knowing more, by pointing out that nothing is needed. Need is an illusion, and nothing needs to happen for this to be the unrecognizable freedom that it is already. The experience of the individual is that to find this, to find what we're talking about, there has to be a certain process. There has to be a movement. The past has to be worked out. Realizations have to happen, or knowing needs to fall away. It doesn't. There's nothing that needs to happen for this to be what it is already. So in that sense, there is nothing on offer to that experience that you were talking about at the beginning, that you're gonna miss something. To that experience, this message is incredibly frustrating. But when there's an, let's say an openness, when something is, is ready, you could say, then something else might be heard something beyond or other than that need for something to happen. That's, that's good, yep. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. So again, our format for this one, if you want to start uh, typing Q&A uh, questions, you can type in the Q&A button here. Uh, Jim is going to be ready to answer any questions. Now I have the first question for you from right. NR. Until me drops away whenever, how should we live to avoid painful experiences in me dream? Yeah, well, you, there isn't a you. That knowing experience is simply an experience in what appears to be being solid, real, in relation to you. That's never true. It's a dream. The dream, part of that dream, is that you have free will and choice to avoid or not to avoid negative or painful experiences. There isn't anyone in there that makes a choice about whether to have or not have painful or negative experiences. There's this popular um, question that, that you know, keeps on coming back in this conference and people keep on asking about free will. Yeah. And all that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a repeated question over and over again. I guess people want to hear over and over again. <laughs> what that there isn't free will. Yeah, yeah. So can you, can, you, can you put your take on that one? <laughs> well, I mean, as, there's, never, there's never an experience of having no free will. But there is the revelation that only the individual, through its experience of knowing or feeling like it knows what's happening, feels like it has the choice to do one thing or another. And it's a dream. That experience falls away with the experience of knowing what's happening. And just to be clear, 
the end of the experience of knowing what's happening isn't then unknowing. It's not a state of unknowing, a state of blankness. It's just an, un, an unfixedness that there's just what's happening without any rules, without any limit, without any need to be one way or another. That's super clear. Thank you, Jim. Here's another question here from Sir Martin Exton. Would you say that beloved, the beloved is everything? Yeah. <laughs> Next it's not question. really. I mean, what we're pointing to, just before we get too far into this, what we're pointing to is something that can't be known. So this, this what's happening, what seems to be going on, can't be fixed as a knowing experience. That is always an imposition of an illusory separation. That's the only thing that seems to be known. When that illusory separation falls away, what's revealed in contrast to the experience that this appearance is conditional, that love is conditional, that freedom is conditional, is the reflection of that no thing or the unknowable that really everything is unconditional, but the unknowable isn't unconditional. It's unspeakable. Brilliant. Thank you. Ben asks, hi, what questions and truths can you give to constantly questioning my me and investigating the ideas around I am? Well, the idea that questioning my me or the me is going to lead somewhere is just a part of the experience that what's happening is known and that there's something that needs to happen to bring about what's longed for. That's just a part of the dream of the individual, that this isn't what's longed for. And that experience, the experience of separation, is a dream. So the idea that it has to go away is just a part of that dream experience. When it does stop, which is possible, that's not a real happening. It doesn't really happen. It, you could say it's an unhappening. So it doesn't fit into the experience of the individual's need for something to happen. It's the end of that need, revealing nothing's happening. Awesome. Anonymous attendee <laughs> asks, how do you explain the suffering that people experience if there's no real person? Why does that need to be explained? I don't know why it would, it, what's an explanation for anything? There's just suffering. If you cut off a finger, it's going to hurt. Anonymous question. It is often said that nobody can do anything to experience non-duality, but it does seem that the world follows cause and effect. Teachers say that there's no path, although they had one. It is perplexing. <laughs> it makes the teachers sound dishonest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I have. I mean, it makes total sense to doubt what's being said here. There really isn't a whole lot of choice when it comes to that separate experience. It will either believe or doubt what's being said, because what we're talking about isn't an experience. It doesn't fit the model of the experience of the individual that feels like knowing, which is the only currency it has, is going to be the solution to its experience that what's happening is dissatisfying. Spot on. <laughs> this is a new classic question from Anonymous that, that I've been seeing too. When you, when you say what's happening, what exactly do you mean? The unavoidable, what arises, what appears, what's happening, which is neither unreal nor real. The ungraspable, unknowable, including the experience of being an individual. It's whatever is happening that includes thoughts, feelings, objects, whatever. That's just simply what's happening. Another one from Anonymous. There's so many Anonymous here. Uh, <laughs> what advice can you give us for self-investigation? I know that there's no me or practice, but in the world of ignorance and illusion, there's an investigation that has to happen. Why does investigation have to happen? That's just still part of the dream that, what, that there's a real individual that really needs to fall away for this to be what's longed for. There, there, is, no, there is no individual. 
that is an illusion. It's not really happening. The experience of separation is that there's some distance or real time that needs to be overcome to find what's longed for. That is a dream. What's happening, this appearance is already unconditionally free. Nothing needs to happen for that to go away. There can arise a dream that it's lost, but it's never found. Wow, thank you. <laughs> uh, Anon says, when this is understood, yeah. I don't know what he's asking, but maybe he's asking, what do you mean by when this is understood? Hmm. Well, I don't know if I said understood. We're really not talking about understanding. Understanding can lead to a certain ease, a certain recognition. You know, if you understand the concepts, that can in some ways be relaxing. But what we're really pointing to isn't an understanding that's rather superficial to what we're suggesting. This one, if there is no time, then when we have a dentist appointment at two o'clock, we seem to follow a thought in time that says it's 1.30 time to leave for the dentist. Yeah. So what one is true, time or no time? Both. Time, time, just like everything else. Maybe you didn't hear the beginning, but I, what the suggestion is, is that nothing is fixed. So is Emerson over there on the screen? Yes. Really? No. So is there time? Yes. Really? No. So is there a past to this appearance? Yes. Could we talk about it? Yes. Is it really past? No. It's simply this appearing is that. Thank you. Thank you. David, is the illusory self merely a construct consisting of our conditioning and belief system? No. No. What happens is, it, this is a story, right? It's not really true. There isn't anything really true. But the story goes that there's a contracted energy that arises in the body out of which an I am arises. So that contracted energy, the first thing it has is here, like I was talking about at the beginning of the meeting. And around that, then through, through experience, there's a belief system built up because just the initial here-ness doesn't actually make sense in the context of this. When I am arise, uh, what arises with it is an experience that the appearance has or needs meaning and purpose. And so my journey is to find and fulfill that. And to do that, I build up, not as a choice, but just through experience, um, my beliefs my beliefs about what's right and wrong and good and bad. And those are built up through experience as my path to find what I feel is missing, as my path to fulfill what I think is the meaning and purpose of the appearance of my life. Now, just to clean all that up, there is no individual, there is no my life, and the appearance has no meaning or purpose. It is already unconditionally free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. This is really yeah, good, Jim. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're just talking to me. You're used yeah. to kind of like people coming in. So I'll try to make kind of like varied facial expressions. No, you're awesome. This is great. <laughs> And I'll try to change my accent, although I can't. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, yeah. <laughs> can empty fullness be described? No. It's not even empty fullness. Just like it's not unconditional love or unrecognizable freedom. Really, this, what is, can't be described. It can't be known. It can't be owned. It has absolutely no fixed points to it. It is anything and everything. It's completely unhinged, <laughs> unbound. There's no way to put anything, to call it anything, empty fullness is to put a label on it. So the difficulty is, is it's not any specific, contained by any specific word. And at the same time, it's absolutely every word. Wonderful, thank you. Anonymous, if you stub your toe, how to say it is that it, it how to say that if you didn't stub your toe, it was your toe, not Sammy's. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does, yeah. 
Yeah, that's coming from the experience that there's really something inside the body. And as long as there's something inside the body, there will be the experience of ownership of what's happening. Nobody does that. It's not a choice. When the I am arises, the experience is that it arises inside the body. It doesn't actually. It arises within everything. So everything that's happening or not is mine. It either is happening to me or it's not happening to me. That's my story. And that's ownership. The individual in that sense is the owner of all experience. It happens to be a dream. As long as it's going, there'll be that experience of ownership. When there's no one left, it's obvious that they're just stubbing the toe. Damn. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous goes, what advice can you give? To who? <laughs> About what? There's a good sushi bar in Asheville, North Carolina. Other than that, I'm not very good for advice. <laughs> did they serve sashimi? They do, of course. Okay. <laughs> Suck it. No, but advice, I mean, I don't <laughs> want to be silly, but advice about how to find what is already. So advice means that something has to happen or there needs to be some movement for this to become. The individual is in a story of becoming. And the question presupposes that there truly is something that needs to happen which is one of the basic movements of the contractions of the individual experience. Something needs to happen. And that generally is a better experience. That's its whole energy is for a better, more experience to add knowing to itself and the hope that at some point there'll be enough. So of course there's no suggestion, there's no advice because there isn't anything that needs to happen. That's not saying that nothing happens. I mean, nothing is happening, but it says that there's no need for anything to arise or anything in particular to happen. There's nothing that could possibly bring about what is already. And what is already is unconditionally free, which is missed by the individual by knowing what, it know, what, it look, what it's looking for. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Anonymous goes, when this is understood, do certain negative feelings still occur as frequently or less frequently, hate, anger, or jealousy. Yeah, I could do. Yeah, yeah. More intense, less intense. Yeah. Next one. How do you realize? Just, just sorry, Go. just to be clear. Go ahead. We're not talking about understanding. Understanding in, in, in this conversation is actually a very superficial. This isn't understanding. It's just another form of knowing. And we're really pointing to an unfixedness, which is neither knowing nor unknowing. So, but still understanding even the concepts can have a, an apparent effect on the experience of the individual. They're powerful. It's a powerful message. Jim, how did yeah. you realize your true being? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so the story of Jim is I fell in love with something that I couldn't understand and died. The end? Yeah, that was the end. <laughs> <laughs> I should turn out the commentary. People are asking questions. Sorry, sorry, I just can't help it. Can you? Sp <laughs> sorry, Jim. Sorry, Rita. Sorry, people. Can you speak on this as anarchy and the experience of consistency in the dream? This seems unreconcilable to the person who lives in a very consistent dream where there is a degree of predictability. Like you don't wake up as a different body every morning. Couldn't anarchy do something as interesting as this? Why is it so predictable and boring? It's, well, that's, that's the dream of the individual. That's, but predictability, you're just exchanging what I say is knowing. <clears throat> and that's the dream. And that is completely, he's, I mean, he's exactly, or she's exactly right. The knowing energy that, that uh, imbues at the entire appearance is what makes it feel dead. So the knowingness of the appearance is the need to find something else, is the need for something else to happen because it's no longer the aliveness that it is already. It's no longer the anarchy that it is already. So you think you know what's happening. You don't. This is already anarchy. It's already unconditioned 
unknowably so. There's no need for anything to happen for that to come about. Predictability is just anarchy appearing as predictability, but that assumes that there was a real last moment that led to this moment, which is gonna to lead to the next real moment. That's the dream. There aren't real, a real continuity. This is a, an immediate, singular, unrecognizable, unknowable happening. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jim. Um, Anonymous goes, awareness speakers talk about awareness being aware of itself. Do yeah. you recognize awareness? There isn't, it. well, in the dream, awareness is just a form of knowing. It's just another form of knowing. It's a contracted energy, awareness, consciousness, attention, I amness. Those are all contracted senses in the body that are just a form of knowing. And teachings are all knowing. Teaching, as I said, it's just, is just is knowing, just engenders the need to know. And teaching is just an aspect of that. And our ask, is falling away of me and arising in what is happening? Well, it's an unhappening. And it really, in the end, it's not worth mentioning. And probably never would be mentioned if there wasn't a separate experience asking a question about itself, what it could find to make this more, because there's nothing to say about it, really. It's just a response. This is for Mark. Hi, Jim. So there is no self. I have known that for years. All there is is what is. There's no other reality. There's only this. It is not a thing. No thing and no one can get it or know it. All this is, is understood, but still there is no deeper comprehension. I, mm. I understand it mentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anonymous attendee goes, I have tried for 10 years to experience I am. I understand you don't talk about that. Would you say that that is just a place in time? Yes, now, now, I am now, that's real. For that experience, that's what it is. And that's why you can say now, because it's, it's, it separates itself from the other apparent time where it's not, no, not self-aware. So, but the message here is, that is a dream. There isn't a now, because there isn't any real point in time to compare it to. Anonymous attendee asks, can you talk about inner and outer objective, objective and subjective? What is transcendental consciousness? I don't know what transcendental consciousness is. If he's talking about the I am, the detached I am that realizes God, then maybe that's what they're talking about. The, um, <clears throat> what we're talking about here is the, there's just what arises. And in that sense, there's no real inner and no real outer. We're talking about the end of what appears as real. A new classic question. So if there's nothing to do, why are we here talking? Who said there's nothing to do? <laughs> no, nobody, it's a misunderstanding. And I think, I think a lot of times there's a, there's a willing misunderstanding or, or a selective hearing because it's, it's never been said as far as I know that there's nothing to do. The suggestion is there's no one to do it and nothing needs to happen. But that's not suggesting that there's someone there that now can decide I don't have to do anything. That's, not, that's just not the message. But if that's what happens, it's what happens. Nobody chooses anyway. Spot on, thank you. Travis goes, does the body-mind experience apparent separation or is it just a sense yes. of self? No. It's a, I don't know what the sense of self is, but body-mind in experience is separation. An experience is always a subject-object relationship. And a subject-object relationship is an experience. And that can only happen if there is a real happening, if it's real. A real I am to experience or know it. Brilliant. Art, has anything deepened or changed for you over time with regard to this message or your experience of it? Well, it's not an experience, but yeah, definitely it's deepened. Uh, Anonymous asks, what books can you recommend? Tony Parsons' books. Uh, 
Um, have you got to real? How have you got to the real state? Are you doubtless? Doubtless. Yes. Yeah. There's no certainty, and there's no doubt. There's there's just no real position. So there's just what's arising, and of course I didn't get there. How could you get to what is already? What movement? So in that sense as well, you've got to say this isn't an achievement, nor is this message coming out of an authority. If anybody knows anything, it's the questioner. This doesn't know. That's the whole point. The message isn't coming out of an acquired knowledge. It's coming out of the end of the need for this to be anything in particular. Anonymous goes, how do we talk? How do we walk the pathless path? You, well, that's, that's <laughs> well, you got it, man. <laughs> Read your question. <laughs> David goes, great answer, LOL. <laughs> um, Isa goes, hi, Jim. I enjoyed your contribution to the film Zero and One very much and the way you clearly express the mystery of non-duality. My apparent separate me is dying to take this chance to ask you a question, but as there's nothing to ask, I would just like to say to the apparent Jim, hi, and thank you. Capital letters, LOL. Oh, thanks. Hi. <laughs> thank you. That's Isa. Hi, Isa. Thanks, Isa. Can you explain God alone is real, please, from Anonymous? God alone is real? Well, I mean, I could come up with some complicated answer, but there isn't anything called a God. If you think of God, God is a concept that the individual hopes for is real, as some sort of hope that something outside of its experience can help it. There isn't anything outside. And there isn't anything real. The whole message is that this appearance, and what I'm talking about when I say this appearance, I'm talking about sitting in front of a computer screen with thoughts and feelings and whatever else is going on isn't real. It has no real position. It's not fixed and it's not knowable or unknowable. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, anonymous asks, I experience a lot of pain in the body with the squeezing. Is that just a story too? It feels horrible. I get relief when I watch you, but then it comes back. <laughs> yeah. And this go on for 20 more years. Yeah. This is what it seems like. It yeah. almost seems silly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not silly. I think that's an unnecessary judgment. Is the story of digestion as true or false as the story of reincarnation? Digestion? Digestion. Well, digestion is just simply something that seems to happen. It's a description of a bodily function. Reincarnation requires belief. Something completely different, it seems to me. Anonymous asks, if we already know what is, why do we not realize it? Well, you, you don't, you, if you know what is, then that's not what's being talked about. What's being talked about is what is, is neither knowable nor unknowable. It's just ungraspable. It's unfixedness. It's indescribable. It can't be put into words. And at the same time, it's every one of those words. And it's everything that's heard or understood. There's no separation. This is from David. Does unconditional freedom permit what is to include what isn't? Conditional freedom? Does unconditional freedom permit what is to include what isn't? Uh, well, I don't know. There's not two separate things. For here, unconditional freedom points to the paradox that the appearance is, appears to be this and it's not at the same time it is and it isn't that's not two separate things is and isn't so it doesn't function in the experiential logical world of the individual that knows what's being said it is and isn't simultaneously unknowably paradoxically and that is all there is 
is what is and isn't. And it doesn't allow anything, nor does it reject anything. It is all that appears. Awesome, Jim. The next one is you make it impossible to ask a question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens is that the individual's need for something else runs into the recognition that there's nothing to get, that the situation is hopeless. 